What are the best stocks to trade in 2023? That's probably something that's on all our minds, right? Every year, there's a set of big winners, themes that emerge in the markets that tend to run for the year. So in today's video, I wanna talk to you about sector rotation and how to understand what could be the next theme that emerges in the market and what type of formation they tend to show before they go. So before we even get started, let me tell you a little bit about the concept of relative strength. Traditional technical analysis tells us that the strongest stocks in the bear market tend to lead the way when a new bull market starts. Now, we're not in a new bull market yet, but we are starting to see signs of bottoming. If you look at the NASDAQ here, you can see for months and months, we've been building out a big base in tech stocks and the overall indexes. So that concept of relative strength, what people often will say is when the market turns, we wanna be in the stocks that held up the most as the market was going down. And that is true. If you're thinking about just some blue chip companies that you wanna hold then right, you want them to be leading the way. They tend to be leaders in terms of the ones that are up the most, but they're not really the ones that give you the most bang for the buck. In bear markets, and every single year in the markets when we're not even talking about bears, there is a rotation from what was the most loved into unloved, and then what was your trash ends up being everybody's goal. So I'll give you a prime time example of that. You know, in 2021, right, EV companies were so hot. If you look at a chart like Lucid or Tesla, RMO, Arrival, even things like Rivian, that market was so hot and everybody was talking about right green energy this and we really felt like we were on the cusp of some huge revolution and on the downside of that while these things are going what's typically happening you see all the oil stocks just cratering so if you look at the price of oil or the xle which is the ETF that handles all the oil drillers, you could see that this was in a huge, huge downtrend. And everybody was talking about how oil is done, right? It's the new age of cool batteries and EVs and different types of green energy and they're going to lead the way and now oil is done. And then look what happens in 2022 all those hot EV companies cratered, right? The price of Tesla down 80%. Stocks like RMO and XL, we were trading these when they were in the 30s and 40s. They are sub $1. Workhorse, ride, all gets down into the $1 range after being up so high. So we're talking about 99% type of declines. And on the downside, that dirty, dirty black gold, the thing that we call oil, look at the charts of these. These were so unloved and look what happens. The price of Oxy, big, big trend. Chevron, big, big trend. Any oil stock you can think of went on this huge rampage. Even the small ones like Nine, SM, all of them went up hundreds of percent. Now the thinking becomes, okay, because they're up hundreds of percent, we have this recency bias because they're leading the way, right? But in 2023, those are actually probably going to be the ones that end up stagnating because they already had their year. They're already up those hundreds of percent. And usually when everybody starts talking about 
war and inflation and the price of oil and all of this kind of stuff and it becomes a buzzword, you start to see the topping out in these type of names. So if you look at the last five months in Oxy or Chevron or Exxon, what do you see there, right? They stalled out. So even with all this talk of right Ukraine war and we're in the middle of winter where it's cold and we need our natural gas and these things should be shooting up, they've stagnated, right? Because stocks run before all of that happens. These things had their day. So now here we are in 2023 and everybody always wants to play what was hot the year before, but that's not the way it goes. What we wanna do is follow that blueprint, right? What's unloved one year becomes the kings the next year. Not in terms of them becoming some big market leader, but in terms of the percentage gains that they go up. So what I like to do is use a base breakout pattern. So what a base breakout pattern is and how we look for it. We are looking for stocks that are down 75% or more. We're looking for stocks that have built multi-month bases where they're holding the lows and they're just done going down. Buyers and sellers have reached an equilibrium, all right? The volume starts to decline. The stock is just left for dead. Usually during this phase, as they're basing out, the stocks will get hit with more and more bad news, but they shrug it off. Why? Everybody already knows that they're turds, right? Like if a stock is sitting at one, two, five dollars, seven dollars, right? From all the way up there, we already kind of know, right? Yeah, of course it's got bad news in it. That's why it's so cheap. But what happens is as they start to build these lows, what you'll start to see is as they start to come out of those lows, now you're going to start to see these big kind of exponential moves off those bottoms. And they can be more powerful than even flat top breakout stocks that are breaking out the all time highs. So we wanna be really looking at the junkiest of junk for January and February. We're talking about SPACs, we're talking about EVs, we're talking about these kind of unloved names that have built big bases and have bottomed out. So you're already starting to see some of this, right? If you look at a, a chart of Redfin, right? This is like your quintessential example. Like this stock is just cratering and cratering and cratering, right? From up so high down into the single digits. It goes sideways for a period of time and then you start to come out of that base and now you're up already, you know, 50% plus, right, in the last month. You know, we wanna look for these type of names. You know, I think a couple other ones that could have some potential, right, we're looking at stocks like, you know, open or skills. Now, I hate trading these kind of cheap stocks because I'm a trend trader, but for that flip, when we're looking for stocks that are gonna make the biggest percentage moves, we wanna look for that dash for trash, which equals cash. So guys, let me know if you have any questions. I've got a whole list of these things that I'm gonna uh, post up in here for you guys. And always remember, just because something was really, really amazing the previous year, does not mean it's going to hold through as we come into this new market, right? We wanna look for stocks that are down 75% or more with those big, big bases, probably some high short interest. Those are the ones that are gonna to tend to lead the way and they're not gonna be the ones that necessarily sustain all year, but in that beginning, right? Because the barrier of entry is so low, they tend to be the ones that rock it off the bottom. So check out some of these bad boys. And guys, of course, let me know if you have any questions and I look forward to hearing from you.